Hi, this is Elliot, W6EL, and I wanted to give you an in-depth view of the ICOM ICM 700 radio as uh, used as a ham radio. This is originally designed for marine use on the HF bands, and it was sold in uh, March of 1984 uh, until I don't know how many years later. Um, you can get these pretty cheap on eBay now because they don't have the digital select calling feature which is needed for vessels uh, on the ocean to call distress with these days. You have to have that feature. So these are getting dumped at reasonable prices. Um, they work fine on the amateur band. There's a jumper that needs to be soldered closed, which it usually already is. And that will give you coverage from basically, I think, 1.6 megahertz up to almost 23 megahertz. If you want to cover uh, 10 meters, there's some work you have to do. I'll, I'll send you a link that shows how to do it. Modes, this is lower sideband off to the side. And that's upper sideband right there. So lower and upper. This is upper sideband with a carrier that's suppressed 16 dB below peaks. And this is AM. However, this AM mode is basically upper sideband with a 40 watt carrier. It's a very loud, fully modulated sound. I kind of like it. I think it's pretty nice. So yeah, there's a lower sideband position that's kind of hidden off to the side. Uh, the buttons, there's a speaker button, which I've wired for something else. I'll go into that later. Noise blanker, squelch. The squelch is really cool. It's an audio squelch. It compares the volume of the speaker, uh, the, the person talking that is, to the overall volume of, of the full received bandwidth. And if it notices there's a lot in that kind of speech area, then it lets it through. If there's somebody talking, we can try it. All right, I'll demonstrate that later. Um, these radios were designed for channelized operations. And so you have 48 channels in three banks of 16 you can access here. I've programmed mine in steps of five, uh, five kilohertz. If you want a different channel, you can unscrew this panel. Okay, and you can just type in, let me go to a different bank here. A uh, different frequency, say you want, you know, 8.7213 megahertz. And press RX right. It's now receiving here. And then uh, we have to also uh, program in our transmit frequency too. So type in the same number again. 8.7213. TX right. Now both have been programmed in. And you can press this button to verify the transmit frequency is the same as you receive. There is a mod, which I'll explain later that lets you get away with just programming the receive frequencies only and the radio operates transmitting on that same frequency. It's very easy to do. There's a tune button which operates uh, ICOM tuner. It'll work with a modern ICOM tuner just fine. You can hide the display. If you accidentally press this button, you'll be confused for a long time as to why the screen doesn't come on until you notice this. The idea here is you would turn on the audio squelch, turn off the display, and you could sleep. And then if your station came through while you're on your vessel, well, you'd hear the audio and then you could come over and turn on the screen too. Kind of a, a nice trick. There is, um, get back over to the hand bands here. There's a clarifier. It's right here. Clarifier also does an IF shift. You can kind of hear it. And it's good for about 150 hertz, plus or minus. This square right here, you can pop out, and there's a button behind it. And that's supposed to activate the alarm feature if you have an alarm board installed, which most people probably wouldn't need. So you can remove this and put your own stuff there if you want. There was also a sticker over this spot, which I removed, and I added an additional knob for more channels. Output power is an easy 150 watts. Um, you can turn it up to 200 if you want. There's two finals in this radio and they're rated at 200 watts each. So it can coast along at 150 watts all day. The stock microphone is a dynamic mic and it has a preamp inside it worth about 10 dB of gain, maybe 20, something like that. 
um, mine had an open coil on the dynamic element. So, of course, after I painted it and like you know polished it up, I noticed this didn't work. So, put a different dynamic mic on from around the same era, and uh, it has less gain, of course, because it doesn't have the preamp inside it. So I added a little board on the inside, which I'll show you guys later. It has the uh, mic preamp and a compressor. Of course, it was too loud, so I had to turn it down. But uh, overall, it sounds really great with the, uh, the speech processor compressor board. Highly recommend that modification. The sensitivity seems on par with many radios from this time period, um, 1980s and uh, late 90s ICOM gear uses almost the same circuitry, so you can expect about the same sensitivity, which, which is pretty good. It's definitely adequate for uh, what we would do with it on ham radio. Noise blanker works fine for combating, you know, ignition noise, that kind of stuff. So let's talk about mods real quick. Um, there's the general coverage transmit modification I mentioned earlier. And um, by the way, I'm going to link down here to uh, my GitLab page where I've documented all this in case you want to see in you know, great detail how to do it. I forgot to mention the problem I have with this radio. When I received this radio for $99, which is a great price, right, for a HF 150 watt radio, it didn't work. And the problem with it was a divider. This little chip right here was bad inside it. It's nothing fancy, but it's used to uh, divide the frequency down in the BFO. And without it, you have no BFO. You just have a lot of noise being multiplied by everything. And it didn't receive at all. So replacing this little chip with a generic one on Amazon solved the problem. It's got a uh, good receive right now. And of course, the microphone didn't work either. That was a simple thing. With those two things in, the radio has been working. and. Um, I didn't even do a precise alignment of it because it seems really good. Uh, all the marine radios have a stabilized frequency reference, which generally means a crystal with an oven and a thermostat so that it stays at the same temperature and it's just rock solid. Um, out of the box, it was off by 34 hertz, which is fine. No one notices 34 hertz. Um, clarifier is 150 hertz plus or minus, so if you want more receive, stability, you could replace the clarifier with uh, fixed resistors, maybe make it like a push-pull pot. That would be kind of cool to turn it on and off. Okay, modifications. There is uh, the jumper I mentioned earlier, which you're going to want to connect for full transmit across the band. There is also a jumper that prevents you from writing to banks A and B. I don't think that's commonly populated, so just leave it out anyway. There is, let's see, a switch on the back of this display board, which disables the 10 keypad, which I guess you could lock it out if you had a really strong desire to not have anybody mess with the radio, you know, just disable it. <laughs> but uh, probably the coolest modification here I did was this. This knob is not on the, the radio by default. There's a little sticker over it. And this modification gives me 480 channels instead of just 48. The way it works, is it switches in different banks of SRAM. Each bank of SRAM has a whole set of 48 channels. There's also an additional bit on the SRAM that I used, and so I toggle that bit as well. Toggling that bit doubles the channels again, so I have 10 banks of channels. So far, I've just used it for these bands, uh, 15 meters, 20 meters, 40 meters, with uh, five kilohertz tuning steps. And that's pretty necessary. You'll find when you tune in people, hams are funny. They like to go to, you know, 7.177 or, you know, weird frequencies like that. And so you need at least five kilohertz granularity to find the station. And then when you find them and you realize you're a little high or a little low, you go up here and type in the exact frequency. This radio does not have a VFO mode. The ICM 600 does, and that's probably a better choice if you happen to see both for sale, but anyway. For $99, I thought this was a, a pretty good deal, despite the limitations. So let me just go into exactly how I did the memory modification. 
I have to flip the radio upside down to see it. This is the memory modification. Now this is the OEM RAM board right here. It has an SRAM chip and I think an OR gate over here. The SRAM chip is what we're interested in. Its battery, by the way, is held charged since 1984. Amazing, but it, it's still, you know, more than two volts coming out. This SRAM chip, I put wires in parallel with the address and I.O. bits over to this board here, which contains a stack of five uh, different SRAM chips, but from the same era. In fact, you use another ICOM radios with the same CPU. The timing is really slow. It's like 150 microseconds per read or something. So you can even use EEPROM chips, which I wish I had done because then I wouldn't need a battery. Uh, in any case, I got the five chips here. Over here, I have the encoder board. The encoder board takes the output from this encoder switch over here, breaks it out into separate outputs, and then puts them into pairs. So I can switch uh, between these guys. Every two clicks gives me a different uh, SRAM chip in this stack here. And every one click toggles the additional bit, which I call A10. So I can turn it on and off. And that's how I get 480 channels. This is the PL, well, this is the, uh, the digital logic board with the CPU. And then this is the PLO board over here, the stabilized crystal. Let's see, what else here? Oh, and for the uh, transmit receive to not go into split mode all the time, that's what this little white wire is here. I, I changed the speaker so that it toggles this wire between ground and float. Used an unused pin, brought it up to here, tapped it off the back over to this board. And so what I do is I and the position of the speaker switch with the radio's own desire for transmit or receive bank. And if the switch is, is turned off, then it just stays on the receive channel the whole time. The memory is really simple here. They're, uh, the knobs on the front panel dictate the first like six bytes of the address. And then there's two or three that the radio toggles on and off because it only stores four bits per address, okay? These are eight bit SRAMs, so I could have got creative, but anyway, it, it's four bits per. And so because of that, there's a couple reads involved uh, to, to pull out the channel data. The radio continually pulls the SRAM all the time. And if you uh, were to program, say, a 10 meter frequency in here or an AM broadcast band frequency in here, the radio would attempt to just do it. It won't let you type it in the keypad, but it's happy to just read it from the RAM and try to make that happen here. You gotta tune the radio to make those other frequencies work, but it can be done, I think. One thing that was surprising when I was designing this was the chip select bit, or the chip select line rather, that goes to this IC. I figured it was just held high all the time except when the CPU is off or something. But no, the CPU actually takes turns talking to the SRAM for memory and the keypad. So it's going back and forth between the keypad and the RAM. I mean, this is a really resource constrained design, I guess, uh, from the 1980s, doing the best they could, right? And so I had to work with that signal turning on and off at about four kilohertz and make sure that I followed that so that my RAM turned on chip enable when the specific RAM was selected with the encoder and this uh, built in chip select signal, which is this white wire here from this little zero ohm resistor. And that was also on and by on we mean low in this design because it's really not chip select, right? Let me uh, turn this around and I will show you the microphone preamp. So this is the mic preamp I added right here. It's really small. It's the size of the tip of your pinky finger right there. That little guy. Let's zoom in for a moment. There it is. Had to add this uh, five volt regulator here. Just a regular old 7805. The current consumption is so small you could use the lower current version too. And I intercepted the uh, gray audio cable which goes right here to the audio preamp circuit with the mic gain knob. Just cut it, wired it into here, in and out, well in and out. And this continues on over to here which really just connects to the, the microphone cables over here. These switches are for the tuner so you can put it into different modes for like an SGC tuner or a SEA tuner or whatever. Uh, what else is interesting on this board? Let's see. Got the two 
filters installed here for AM and sideband. There is no CW on this radio. The IC M700TY does have a CW filter though. That's kind of cool. This space here is for the alarm board or whatever else you can imagine. That's where the alarm board would connect right there, in that header. So that's about it. Um, I'm just going to tune the radio around a little bit and give you an idea of what it's like using this radio now. I'll turn on the squelch. We can uh, see how that works. Model number YK88 Sierra November 1. And that's the plug in type filter. Fits various radios. A bunch of them, actually. We'll do $60. It's got a couple seconds of delay before the, um, the squelch turns on. So you can see it coming and going. Usually it's a little bit more impressive during a QSO. There it goes. So it went away and came back. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you have uh, questions about this. And we'll probably do the ICM600 next time, which is another interesting HF radio you can find online. Seven threes.